I cannot believe that I haven't done a video about the mooses of all gooses yet. Sure, I have the four seasonal bosses video, but I still manage to somehow make videos on all the other big pads regardless. And Klops even got two for Pete's sake. But today, we fixed that. And we got ourselves a lovely moose hunt planned. And I guess the first question is, where do we start looking? Well, they do seem to be a goose of a moose, right? So they must have nesting sites. And that they do. And in Don't Starve Together, world generation can spawn up to a total of nine normal nests like the one you see here. And in order to know for sure that it is a moose spawn, we need to see that circle of twigs over yonder. But the process to distinguish a spawner goes well beyond that. And you might have noticed that there are berry bushes and a birch nut tree around as well. And these are the surefire ways to locate these nesting sites. And that extends to the map as well. Cause in this shot alone, we have five potential sites that may spawn a goose once the rain start to roll in. But do you see this pond over here? Seeing as moose goose spawns typically have isolated ponds across the map, people may tend to think that this one is one. But it is missing some things, isn't it? No berry bushes or birch nuts to be found. And that usually equals no nesting site. The key word being usually, yes, what you are seeing now is 100% possible. There is a set piece that can spawn that sees a rather large amount of nesting sites located really darn close to each other and perhaps even without a pond, berry bush, and birch nut in sight. I'm about to touch on why it's very unlikely that you'll see all of these nests here in full, but I can confirm that it is entirely possible. And if you do happen to kill one moose goose among the potential three or four that could be in this group, every single mossling will attack you, even if it wasn't their mother that you just murdered. So this set piece can be the spot for a crazy and large battle at times, and it is awesome. But yeah, why won't we see all of our spawned in nests having a moose goose? Well, it's twofold. On the default, world generation settings, only 50% of the nests in your game will eventually have a goose, and thus, an egg. But... That number can be raised to 100% of the nest being occupied if you happen to change the moose goose spawn settings in world gen. And by the way, goose doesn't actually spawn immediately following spring's arrival, but rather between a half a day and a day and a half in. And she will look to lay an egg very shortly after landing in the constant. Give it two days and a miracle occurs. If you can call the hatching of five literal demon spawns a miracle. But say hello to the Mosslings, everybody. With mom around, they are very skittish beasts, but they will look to avenge her murder, and they will do so in style. In their enraged state, they will rush the player and attack by literally turning into electrified whirlwinds. And each time they do, there is another 10% chance for them to call lightning down from above. This is no issue for WX, but others should look to place a lightning rod nearby goose spawns for this reason. But eventually, the Mosslings will tire and become dizzy. But... There is another way to get their attention. Cause why wait the two days for nature to take its course and work its magic when you can just be a heartless individual like me and just destroy it? With a hammer in hand, you can actually smash the egg yourself, but it will also deal 10 damage to you each time you hit it. Sadly, even though you do get electrified yourself, the effect does not translate to WX becoming overcharged like he would otherwise. And keep in mind that a weather pane can actually be used to avoid the damage penalty entirely and still give you some range to stay away from the incoming beasts. But if you do happen to strike the egg a total of four times, the Mosslings will be looking to spin you crazy. And by the by, Mosslings also have a 10% chance to just straight up stop after just 2.5 seconds of spinning. 
But otherwise, they will always become dizzy once they move 10 units away from the player. But enough of all that. It's time to talk some mama murdering. And to get her butt down on the ground if she isn't there already, you just need to smack one of her children in the face and it and the others will begin crying out for her. And eventually, mom will arrive on the scene. At 6,000 health, Muskus on paper actually appears rather tough. But this fight is one of the easiest in the entire game. Yes, her range may be a bit longer than most, but she only has one real melee attack, and she can only target one thing at a time. So rolling up with a party, or just other befriended creatures, is the most useful strategy for you if you do struggle with this. But along with that melee attack does come another, and it's a honk so powerful that it knocks your weapon out of your bloody hands. She will do this honk after three normal engagements of trading blows back and forth. But there is a very simple and very efficient way to combat it. And it's holding spacebar. Cause if you are kiting her properly anyway, you will be going in and out of range of her attacks regardless. And once she honks you, you will most likely be running away at that point. And when you are, if you are just holding spacebar while still running in that same direction, you will instantly catch your weapon in air, allowing you to get right back into the fight with no other nonsense for you to worry about. But as far as that kiting pattern goes, getting three to four hits yourself, depending on your speed boost in play, of course, is a viable thing to do. And then just repeatedly avoid hers until deadzo. But I must recommend that you have rain gear around as well, as wetness can be killer, as it can lead to your weapon slipping out of your hand. But once dead, the real fun begins. The Mosslings will go ape and wish to rearrange your face, but avoiding them is super easy. As they begin their spin, just change direction and they'll spin right on by you and miss you by a mile. So just pick one and chase it down. Then just smack it to death and do this for each one and you'll be fine. But just remember the chance for lightning, the level of your wetness, and do not get caught in the middle of all those whirlwinds. If you do, that has bad news beard written all over it. But on to what the loot can do for you. Using five down feathers, two cut reeds, so that means a trip to the swamp is gonna be needed, and two rope. You can craft yourself what is known as a luxury fan. And with 15 uses, this is actually an item to be well aware of with summer right around the corner, folks. Because when used, the luxury fan can drop your temperature by 50 degrees instantly and can even put out nearby fires, be it a player's own fire pit or even wildfires. Plus, in Don't Starve Together, it also cools other nearby players, so it is definitely worth the craft if your struggles in summer are hot on your heels. Next up, the weather pane. You'll have to head to the Oasis Desert to find some vault goats in order to nab one of their horns for this craft, but the 10 down feathers and the one gear should be easy to come across. But combine them to create this unique weapon, but really, weather panes are more of a tool, if anything. Because when used, the gadget unleashes a whirlwind that will damage and destroy objects, making it great for gathering logs. Just as long as the trees are close together, that is. But you could certainly use it in combat, especially against some slower mobs and definitely against poison birch nut trees. But it's really not my weapon of choice. So I will recommend that it shouldn't be yours either. And finally, the figure sketch. You will happen to need a potter's wheel. So go ahead and craft one from the science tab and place it down wherever you please. And then you'll have to put the sketch into the wheel, which is something that people forget all the time. Then pick either stone or marble as your material. 
place that down in the wheel as well, and then you will unlock the Moose Goose figure recipe. In order to craft it, you will need some rocks as well, but if I have to tell you where to get those, I have no idea why you're watching this video. But all that combined with five more down feathers will allow you to craft your very own commemorative statue of the Mooses of all Gooses. But there you have it everyone, our very first guide on Moose Goose alone and how to go about making her think twice about flying south to the constant the next time spring rolls around. We have now done a video on every single seasonal boss, so please go have a look at them all and thanks for watching. I hope this one helped, I wish you well out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!